good morning, everybody. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. All right, great. You look ready to me, and I uh, thank you for uh, uh, investing your time here. You're not spending time here, you're investing time, okay? Yes. We're going to make sure you get a good return on your investment. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I, 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 I was a pastor. I was born here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, my father actually was born here in 1924. He's 92. And, Still fresh, owns the O.W. Ranch in Canyon Creek, and we feel like uh, my grandfather owned a large portion of the northwest part of uh, Phoenix, John Jacobs Farms, and uh, we've been here forever. So we've uh, and you know really been invested in Phoenix through the years. And I'm I'm just uh, I graduated from Arizona State University. Yay! Yay all right, all, all my kids have to. My my son just got his doctorate in geophysics. Whoa. So uh, I'm really excited about. We just he from just the got there from the U of A, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, he went to his undergrad. Those what's important that's ASU, and, and then U of A is the number three geo geology uh, school in the in the United States. So he got it there, and now he's doing a postdoctorate at Rice University uh, for two years and so forth. Uh, it's weird. Uh, Chevron. He just did a project for Chevron for two and a half months. They paid him $9,500 a month. I thought that was pretty good for a 27-year-old, you know, and so forth. So this is, aha! Everybody go, aha! Yeah. All right, so that's good. And thanks for Philippines for being here. I just came from the Philippines. Just got home on Tuesday night. Uh, traffic in Manila. Uh, <laughs> I want to say, Mabuti in Dios. Okay? Mabuhay. Pudding up on in a on. Okay? Pudding. And to the Uganda guy, I want to say, Tawali Mutawana. Okay, Tawali Mutawana. No problem, no problem, no problem. I mean, it's okay. In Uganda, I can do you all the Buana Asifi ways. Wait, that's the, that's the Swahili there. Mokama Yedo Ziwe, no. And all those types of things or whatever. So. You always learn a little bit of language from countries you've been in. I've been over uh, 100 countries and ministered in 90 of those. So um, I just, you know, it's the old Beach Boys song, round, round, get around, I got around. You know that one, okay, that gym, yeah, okay, so. Um, I really, I was a pastor in Phoenix, started, we started a, I, I mean, actually was a pastor for uh, two years at Grace Community Church, just right over here on rural and uh, McClintock, in that area. I was the singles pastor. We had 550 singles in our singles department in those days, from 80 to 82. I started a company here in Phoenix, you may have heard of Central Bindery, um, uh, in the printing industry there, and that business still goes on today. It's certainly by far the biggest bindery in the state. My brother has it now, but I started at 24 years old, and uh, I put $3,000 into that uh, business, and. I didn't know anything about the bindery industry at all. It's just weird. I just saw it as an opportunity. And so uh, it was really kind of an interesting thing. Started off with just myself. And five years later, I had 43 employees. And uh, then God called me into the ministry. Oh, I hated that. Uh -oh. I said, God, oh no, do you know how much they pay those guys? You know? <laughs> and and uh, all of that. And so. Uh, it's kind of a fun, fun thing, and I start put three thousand dollars into it, got a loan, and and it's a little dying business. It was a, a very, very elderly couple. They only had one customer left, and it was basically a dead business. And so, uh, ended up buying that, and uh, you know, sold it uh, five years later, five six years later, for a million dollars. Yeah. All right. So that was that. You know what you call that? Creation of wealth. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so that was a win early on in life that repelled me. And then we started, and then I went in the ministry. We, I had a church here called Hosanna Christian Fellowship. Dan went to that. Greg went to that. And uh, over there, Greg Herbert, great to see you guys. And so I've been a pastor. And, and right now, for the last uh, 16 years, I've been pastoring pastors. Good. Thank Are you with me? Those guys, I mean, that's like herding cats. All right, I mean, uh, that's, uh, I, I married Robert Kayanja in Uganda, and, and uh, I was there, and uh, in the, right after, uh, 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 who's the guy that, uh, the bad guy? Idi Amin. I was there right after Omidi. Idi Amin was, uh, Tanzania kicked him out. I was there when Abote was there, and 
They had to put a post of guard outside at the Hotel Diplomats and uh, all that kind of stuff. We did some conferences at the McCarrie University and everybody will tell you that's where the whole Uganda thing started was out of those meetings with Rick Painter, Dr. Harvey Lipsy, and myself. And uh, so and Robert Kayanda was 19 years old, I'm telling you what. I mean, that's back when there were dinosaurs still in Uganda, right? In Uganda, all right. But everybody, thanks for uh, coming this morning. I do appreciate it, and, and thank you for uh, uh, helping out with the finances. I know it helps, uh, it helps this, uh, this FGB. I want you to know, I just thought, I was telling uh, Tim that I, when I'm in Singapore, and uh, uh, you know, I just had 500 love. There's a movement called Love Singapore with Lawrence Kong, and they just had me as their main speaker. I had 580 pastors from Singapore. Yeah. Are you with me? And I mean, all these guys. I mean, those Singaporeans—they are tough dudes. Uh, they are. There's really a lot going on there. And I spoke at Lawrence's uh, church, the third biggest church in Singapore, and. I could go on and on with all that. So I just slide in that to let you know a little bit about me. I have a wife by the name of Becky, and we have three children, and, and uh, they're, we're just so excited. They're all up and running now, and everybody seems to be doing well, and thank God for that, okay, and uh, all of that. So I'll let you know a little bit about my family. Um, one of the things that the Lord's kind of, that I'm doing now is being a resource for churches all over the world on how to grow a church for the community. Um, very interesting. I think there's three types of churches. There's a, a Christian fellowship. That's number one. Christian fellowship, that's just a bunch of fellows who are in the same ship. Okay? Um, they're, uh, you've been to those churches. They're great at being upward and inward, terrible at being outward. And that's why groups like this had to start up, you know, because nobody was doing that outward ministry. Churches are complex. They have to be upward, inward, and outward all at the same time. And that, that's an art form, you know, that, that uh, most pastors have been trained in Bible schools and seminaries. They are really trained in upward and inward, but not, very, but not trained in outward. All right. So what I do is I'm a resource to them. I just come on. I'm the guide by their side. And so I'll come in and help them to grow, move from a Christian fellowship and uh, to a church for the community. Now, so there's a Christian fellowship. Number two, there's a, uh, I call these guys community churches. Community church. They're big churches. They get people saved. But uh, they take from the community, but they don't give anything back to the community. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Hey, just the bigger organ, you know, the bigger PA system, you know, we're having, I've heard of, I've been in places where they've had arguments over whether, you know, the guy didn't like the million dollar PA system, it had to be a 1.5 million dollar PA system, you know, and, and uh, the Uganda guys can't even relate to that, or the Filipinos, you know, and, and so, uh, uh, you know, that's ridiculous. They t and we have a lot of those. They have big buildings. There's a lot of those around Phoenix. They get people saved, which is great, but it's all about them. They're, they're like a, they have a strong gravitational pull inward. All right? And so what I'm concerned about that, because those are the types of guys, you ask the mayor, you ask the community, who are these guys, you know, and all that. And so they aren't helping out on any, they aren't helping the education. The mayor doesn't know who they are. You know, they're just big. And so I want to move them from a church to a community where that's where we get involved in the community. That's where, how do you say it? The people sitting in those chairs are not just sitting in those chairs. They're the uh, mayors. Are you with me? Why don't we start developing tomorrow's mayors today? That's right. In church. Why don't we start, you know, and you got, we got to get to those mountains, the top of those mountains. You can't, you don't change a community from the bottom. Most people, most churches minister the bottom, the poor and all that. But the real, where you get a, where you get a culture, where you win a culture, is you got to get to the top of the mountain. If you get the top, you get the bottom. But it's one thing to get to the top. It's another thing to have something to say when you get to the top. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of people up there. They're at the top of those mountains in education and in business and government and all but they don't have anything to say. I'm concerned about having something to say when you get to the top, guys. 
and um, uh, you know that shifts the community. Transfigured people transfigure mountains. Hello. Trent, what was Jesus doing? When do those guys see him? The first time, here they are, then Matthew, this is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Uh, this is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. That's all you heard, okay? But on Matthew 17, you let go a few chapters, and then God shows up the exact same way again with an audience of Peter and James and John. And God comes back and says the same thing in a cloud with light, boom. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, now that's interesting. Why? Because they were top of mountains. Now we're talking people on top of mountains that can transfigure a, the education mountain. That can transfig see, transfigure people, transfigure mountains. That's why I like hearing about this attorney general guy. He's at the top of a mountain there. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. He's got potential to change the whole system. I mean, we just saw a runaway attorney general. That's right. yeah. yeah. And you know what they did? They yeah. corrupted. See, the character of the king permeates the kingdom. Yeah. 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 Hello? Yeah. That's what we've been dealing with for the last eight years. That's right. Are you with me? So and they went, who did he put? Other kings just made in his image. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. That's the problem with Uganda. Now we've got a good guy now, Mo seventy now. He's got a Bible from my church to <laughs> President Mo seventy from Hosanna Christian Fellowship. Yeah, I always like just I just like it. His wife is awesome. You know, so we got we got Tanzania guys stop arresting corruption. We're seeing changes in Africa that blow your mind. Angola, the government of Angola, we got Christian going right into there. A guy, a friend of mine, just sold. Uh, uh, what was it? An order for 10,000 tasers to the government of Angola. <laughs> Christian guy right here in town. And uh, we've got influence going in there. And what we're trying to do, we, when, once we get Zuma out of South Africa, things will be good. But, but uh, you know, we, we, why? Because we've got to transfigure, we've got to have transfigured people in order to transfigure mountains, guys. Now, right. let me, if I could, just, am I, am I having fun with you here yet? Okay, so, I mean, I just think strategically or whatever, that's all I, that's all I do. Yes. It's just help bring a little, I love the Holy Spirit, but you know, I don't want just wildfire. I want intelligent fire. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I want fire inside of an engine that's taking you from Phoenix to Tucson in a few hours. <laughs> Are you with me? Right. Wildfire just burns down everything. What we want is intelligent fire. We want, how do you say, we want to move from a working generality to a meaningful specific. We want to, it's like a magnifying glass. I want to focus the light so that when I get it in the sun, that it burns up that sheet rather than just producing a lot of stuff around it. I want it focused and I want it relevant and I want it strategic and I want it set out for a purpose. Hello. Um, let me just give you a story here real quick. Now, you remember that story, and then I'll get right in, guys. I do have a, a pretty detailed handout today. It's from a book that just Destiny Image doing. In fact, I just met with them two days ago in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. I was back speaking at Randy Clark's uh, Bible School for a couple days. Just flew in last night. And uh, so it stayed at the Super 8 there because it was the cheapest on the road. I have a prophetic word for you guys. A prophetic word. Don't stay at the Super 8 or Chandler Road. Uh, take that. Take my word for it, okay? Uh, you don't want to stay there. It's very tempting. It's good location. Cheap price. You get what you pay for. Okay. But, in any event, let me just, just share with you, I'm going to share with you two stories. And I don't, you've heard of the sight and sound generation, isn't it? Have you heard that term, the sight and sound generation? Uh, I'm going to change it to the sound and sight generation in just a minute, okay? But listen to this story. And they came to Bethesda and they, say, and they brought a blind man to Jesus, imploring him to touch him. And taking the blind man by the hot hand, uh, let's see, taking the blind man by the head, brought him out of the village. I like that. He brought him out of the village, and after spitting on his eyes, 
Here, let me demonstrate that to you. Sorry. Uh, uh, they were spending his time. And laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, for I have seen them like trees. All right? Walking around.